I'm Sebastian St. James. So you like dividends and you like ETFs. Should you combine the two and buy dividend ETFs? In a previous video, one of my viewers asked, Hi mate. Hi Sandeep. To reduce risk, instead of buying stock, what is your thought of buying VHY or SYI ETF, which also gives good dividend? Also, should we buy them in lump sum or on regular interval? Thanks, please guide. This is Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield ETF, VHY. It has a management fee of 0.25%. Its investment objective, Vanguard Australian Shares High Yield ETFs. Remember high yield or dividends is the whole basis for this video. Seeks to track the return of the FTSE Australian High Dividend Yield Index before taking into account fees, expenses and tax. The ETF provides low cost exposure to companies, etc, etc. The most important thing down the bottom. Australian Real Estate Trusts or REITs are excluded from the index. So if you're asking questions about dividends, but you want to exclude REITs, well this is how I feel about REITs. Properties, that means REITs, have tenants. Tenants pay rent. Rent equals income. Yield equals distribution, which can be income or dividends, divided by the price. So I want yield true. I should therefore exclude REITs. What? The question is, if you're specifically after yield, should you totally focus on REITs? Well, no, I'm not saying that either, but I'm saying don't necessarily exclude them. Back to the ETF. Its fund inception date is the 23rd of May, 2011. It is domiciled in Australia. ETF number two is SYI, which is the MSCI Australia Select High Dividend Yield Fund. It is owned by State Street. Its management cost is 0.35%. The index they follow is the MSCI Australian Select High Dividend Yield Index. Its key features are capture income, earn potential quarterly income from companies with relatively high dividend yields with potential franking credits. What? <laughs> so they're relatively high, they're not guaranteed to be high, and they're potential franking credits. There's no guarantee of franking credits. Hmm. Its inception date was in 2010. It's registered in Australia, Australian domiciled. So here's a comparison. What do we notice? Different companies, different fees. So Vanguard is the cheaper, different index. However, we have no idea which index is better or worse, but we will talk about that in a minute. Do either of them accept rates? No, they don't, but I do. But then Sandeep never asked me. We can learn a lot about an index by what stocks are held. So here are the top 10 stocks. A versus B, VHY versus SYI. So on the left, we notice VHY, Commonwealth Bank, BHP, National, all the way down to Transurban Group. On the right, SYI, West Farmers, Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals, right down to Medibank Private. Oh, I'm just checking in case there's been a data breach and my information has been leaked onto the dark web. When I read out those lists, they didn't really seem to be very similar at all. So I've lined them up. Let's go through and find out are there stocks that appear on both. On the Commonwealth Bank, that actually appears in nowhere else. Therefore, I'm going to make it dark gray. West Farmers, however, does appear on both. It'll be pretty yellow. On to the next line, BHP actually appears on both. However, National Bank doesn't, it goes gray. Rio Tinto does not appear on the other list. It goes gray as well. On we go, Woodside, no, does not appear anywhere else. And Fortescue Metals, no, you think it would, but it doesn't, so it goes gray as well. Is Westpac shared on both lists? No, so it goes gray. Minerals Rest Limited, no, it goes gray. ANZ Bank, no, it goes gray. NIB Holdings, no, it goes gray. Hang on, these lists have nothing to do with each other. Yes, that is the point. JB Hi-Fi, no, it's not shared, it goes gray. Telstra, goes gray. Metcash, goes gray, goodness. Macquarie Group, no, it goes gray. Horizon Holdings, goes gray. And onto the last line, Transurban, goes gray, and Medibank Private, goes gray. So the conclusion is, VHY and SYI have very little in common, based on their top 10 stocks. The astute amongst you should be starting to notice a problem already. If they're supposedly going for the best dividends and yet they're not holding the same stocks, hardly at all. Well, they can't both be going for the best dividends if they're not holding the same stocks at all, can they? Somebody is telling me a great big fib. Or is it both of them? The problem is this. With regular ETFs, cap-weighted ETFs, there is something that we know about them. What is it? 
regular ETFs such as VAS, STW and IVV, there is an agreed approach to what those indices are. In other words, they're cap weighted. That's the agreed approach. With dividend index funds such as VHY and SYI, there is no agreed approach to what those indices are. I give good dividends. Yes, good dividends. But how do you select the stocks? Mm, that's a secret sauce. When you come to buying individual performing stocks, you certainly can buy and hold stocks yourself or even buy and trade if you want to. But there is kind of a consensus that for most people, for the average Joe, you may do better off if you actually go and buy an index fund like IVV, the S&P 500, or VAS, the ASX 300. But when it comes to dividend yield funds, ETFs, there is no consensus that you should, if you're the average Joe, run along and buy the ETF and don't stock pick. That consensus does not exist. So question number one, if you're buying for dividends, should you buy individual stocks or ETFs? Well, if you hate buy and holding lots of individual stocks, then dividend ETFs may be an option for you. So how many would you have to hold? Well, that depends. 25, 30 stocks to get a good diversification. Maybe that's too many for you. Well, you don't have to hold that many then. But if you're like, well, I'd like to hold that many, but I don't want to actually do all the paperwork. I'll just go on ahead and buy an ETF. That's fine. That's a choice you're making, but the data doesn't suggest that you should necessarily do that. So we know that the cap weighted ETFs have a high probability of outperforming the average Joe. But there is no consensus that dividend ETFs outperform the average Joe. It just does not exist. If that's true, then why is there this consensus that index funds in general, cap weighted ones, outperform the average person and yet dividend ones don't? Shouldn't all ETFs outperform or they shouldn't outperform? No. And there's a very important reason why. It comes down to the holdings of the individual ETFs. Already we have discovered that they're nothing alike, although they're both saying, oh, pick me, pick me, I give the best dividends returns. Yes, well, but at its heart, there is a problem, a fundamental problem, and this is it. This is the holdings of VHY. If we have a look down the bottom, we notice it holds, oh, only 70 stocks in total. Out of the entire ASX, 70 is what it holds. This is SYI. It refused to tell me on the website, so I had to download a spreadsheet, which fortunately I'm quite capable of doing, and it holds in total, oh, 30 stocks, that's it. 30, the little 3-0. Already it's becoming clear to me what the difference between normal ETFs and dividend ETFs are. VAS holds 300 stocks, IVV holds 500, VHY, 70, SYI, only 30. Well, they are teeny tiny little numbers, aren't they? So cap weighted ETFs versus dividend ETFs. For cap weighted ETFs, you're holding the market or probably about 80% of it. With dividends, no, there is stock picking going on. Cap weighted ETFs are passive, whereas dividend ones are actually active. That last part is debatable. Probably within the ETF it isn't because the index is drawn up and they just buy what the index says. So from that point of view, it is in fact passive, but the index, no, the index is really stock picking. And if you've only got 30 stocks out of the entire market, no matter how you roll it, that is stock picking, in my opinion. Well, there it is. That is the answer to your question. Why does the ASX 200 or IVV, the S&P 500, tend to outperform the average stock picker? Because they're basically holding the whole market. They're not really trying to pick stocks. They just own the whole thing. Dividend ETFs, on the other hand, don't own anywhere near the market. A tiny little fraction. And therefore, their handful of stocks that they pick and your handful of stocks that you could pick yourself and own directly, well, Who's to say which is better? The question is, within the two dividend ETFs that I've been given to operate on, which has got the better return? So let's have a look. We notice with VHY, over the one year it has 7.89%. Over the three years, 7.38, it went to 6.88 and then 8.28%, right? SYI, well, its total fund return, which is dividend plus price growth, over the one year is 4.24%, over the three years is 3.02%, over the five years is 4.59%, but hang on, where's the 10 year? I can't find it. Thank you for giving me the raw data, Sebastian, but that is too much information. Can you simplify that for me? Well, yes, I can. So over the one year, the winner in total return is VHY. Over the three years, VHY. Over the five years, VHY. There it is, that's the summary. So in conclusion, VHY outperforms SYI in all time periods that we represented in this video. 
You can buy stocks because of the dividends that they pay. You can even buy dividend yield funds because of the dividends they pay, but you need to know the truth. How does it compare with a bog standard index fund? Well, that I'll answer. You want to notice on this graph in red and green is VAS, which is the ASX 300. That's what we're comparing things against. In blue is VHY, in pink is SYI. And they start off at the exact same point over the one year. We are noticing, oh, dark blue is going up and up and up and dark blue wins. Oh, look at that, it's pretty obvious. So the winner over the one year is VHY. Hmm, that's a dividend fund. Over the two years, let's go. They're starting off, oh, dark blue, oh no, dark blue's gone down and oh no, it's broken out again and dark blue's going and yay, and dark blue wins. Therefore, over the two years, the winner is VHY. Onto the three years. Well, they're all bunched up there. They're going along and I can't tell. Other than pink is down the bottom, it's down the bottom. Oh, oh dark blue, dark blue's ahead by the nose. It's going and yes, dark blue wins again. So over the three years, the winner is VHY. But hang on, isn't the whole idea of presenting me these graphs to convince me that the bog standard index fund is the better one? And yet it's not, is it? It's the dividend yield fund that is winning. Ha. Huh. Ha, huh, to you too. Let's continue. Over the five years, we notice, ooh, red and green for the first time is now out in front. Red and green is the bog standard index fund, the ASX 300, and it is out in front. There are a massive crash there. Everything goes down, but the VAS does not go down as much as the dividend funds. And then it starts to outperform and it's over off the top and it will go to the very end. And yes, it wins. Red and green wins. Therefore, over the five years, the winner is VAS, which is the normal index fund. And our last graph is over the 10 years. They start off together and then red and green is out in front and it's sort of above and it's above and oh, the huge crash again. And yes, red and green continues out in front and red and green wins again. Over the 10 years, we have noticed that the winner is VAS. So our conclusion is VAS, which is the ASX 300, outperformed the two dividend ETFs over five and 10 years. Remember, over the five and 10 years actually include all the other years, the one, the twos and threes. It's not just over the last part, it's over the entire amount. So it's fairly simple to conclude on the data that we're presented that a bog standard index fund actually outperforms the dividend ones. Of course, you may be choosing a dividend yield fund because you want specifically the dividend and that's fine, but don't forget about the total returns because if your dividends are higher, but the share price goes down, Ah, you're going to be happy with that. Let's talk about VAS and its actual return. Well, there is your data there. Once again, far too much information, so I will summarize that for you. Here it is. This is the total return chart over the three ETFs. Over the one year, VHY1. Over three years, VHY. Over five years, we notice it is VAS. Unfortunately, SYI refuses to give me 10 years, so on the three, I cannot go any further. So. Let's go further, but let's ignore SYI because it ignores itself. So over the 10 years, we notice that, ooh, VAS continues to win at 8.62%. VHY, look, it's not bad at 8.28%. Remember, this does include dividends. And SYI will never know over 10 years, although it's been around for more than 10 years. So my conclusions are the ASX 300 outperformed both dividend ETFs over five and 10 years but you may be a dividend buyer, in which case that's perfectly fine. So the original questions that Sandeep asked, here are the actual answers for those. If you're buying for dividends, should you buy individual stocks or ETFs? To which the answer is, there is no known probability that dividend active ETFs, because they are active, stock picking will be better than yours. So unlike normal index funds, these dividend ETFs are not owning the whole market. There's definitely stock picking going on there, at least within the index itself. If you don't want to hold multiple individual stocks, then a dividend ETF may be for you. It's your choice. If you're happy to hold individual stocks, feel free to ignore dividend ETFs if that works for you. Question number two, VHY versus SYI. Well, we notice VHY outperformed based on our data. VAS did even better, if you're into that sort of thing. Lump sum or regular intervals? That I will answer in a future video because dollar cost averaging actually applies to many, many things, not just to dividends. So if you want the answer to that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. That leaves us with one question. What are the best dividend stocks for Australian retirement right now? Click here to find out.